scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Are we together now? Yes. That all things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of god that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the Bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth, it means that he's giving you access. It's a scepter of dominion. That with this word, when he grants it unto you, then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers. Now, truthfully speaking, it may take a while, you see, because God is not a magician. It's a system. That means your participation is required. But that line upon line. My brothers and my sisters, let me give you a guarantee. And I tell you this in the name of the Lord. If you listen to the things that I teach you. And you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive. There is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny. It's a matter of time. Forget about the things you do not see and focus on what God is giving you. What God is giving you is greater than any car you can buy. Trust me. You must have something greater than material things to get material things. You can't have something less than material things and then have these things. God is if all God gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you. He will give you something that will compel the Gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising. Are we together now? There is nothing in the Bible that is a true blessing that is physical. Listen carefully. There is nothing in the Bible that is given physical, like you give someone something physical. You may call it a blessing, but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ we reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have unfortunately Please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may, be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God. God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master of the sense realm. 
he knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses the sensory perceptions that come from his environment so he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what god is doing in your life if it is true you are receiving favor where is it and you stand and say boy it's true oh, Kai, god you serve I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gari. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word, not our experiences. Your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful. So if you depend on your experiences, you will see gaps in, supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God. You will see obvious things God did not do, supposedly. So you take your mind, your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity. You use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And you say, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. If, if you give yourself halfway, hoping so that if it fails, at least you can put your leg somewhere. It, it doesn't work like that. Let me tell you. You throw yourself in this thing and say, if I perish, I perish. This, this scientific Christianity, I know God is faithful, but let me patch him with an uncle. So one leg is here, one leg. So that whatever happens, your ego is not stung. And that very ego is why you may never see the power of God. Because you have not proven to God that you have thrown all to him. And you just come and say, God, if you don't help me, I don't have an option. God says, this is what I like. Now that you have stepped aside, let me show you that I am a great God. Are we blessed tonight? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you. You know, most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently. Even pastors, most men of God don't know why they hold weekly fellowships. Others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for, for the week or the month. Because every time people gather, they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before God empty-handed. So they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church. It may not be entirely true. The regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God. 
is one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the spirit of god that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of god to learn the ways of god life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category i'm passionate about what i do not know i'm passionate about the danger i may submit myself to not knowing what i should know and so my heart is always panting to find out lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do i not know if you do not know look at me for instance if i'm standing at the edge of this stage and i do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down i'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because i'm not aware it will not touch me i will fall and it can kill me is that true so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for god to expose us to the ways of god and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of God in the midst of his people. It's, 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 it's not going to be possible to present a God that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him. It's one thing to know that the possibilities of God are encapsulated in this Bible. But it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it. You don't need to experience everything. But that God does something in your life. That you can now say, Kai, God, now I know. I know. So the next time you are talking to someone and says, which God? You say, no, forget about the apostle. Look at my life. I'm now a testimony, an epistle that God is able to do this and that. Hallelujah. There is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word. The spirit of distraction. You can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking, you are learning. No. The Bible says that the sower sows the word. Right there, Satan is in the midst of, of, of God's people roaming around and looking for careless hearts and he comes by himself and takes the word so that you are ever learning oh this topic ah i know it i remember genesis chapter this verse this but there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. so please let's challenge ourselves and say lord it is true that i don't serve you just for results but Lord, I'm determined, I'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life. If you see God's hand in one, two, three areas, and remaining four, five, six, you are encouraged. But where you get zero over six of God's hand, is not enough testimony. Are we together? It is the word of God that builds it is the word of God that gives men allocations in this kingdom. Like a domain. And the word of God allocates you. Come darling. And says you stand here. Come my dear. Stand here. Come. This is your place of dominion. You have believed in me enough. The word of God gives you your allocation in life. So this person starts somewhere. And God says, there is a seat I have given you in the prophetic. And the word of God gives you that position. You stay there and you know it's an office backed up by God himself. No man will be able to stand against you. This one was apportioned by the spirit. As a testimony, not of your desire for ministry. Listen, as a testimony of your staying power with God. For as a prince, you have power with God. You can roam around and say, God has called me into business. Life drives you out. You come again and say, 
where God called me into family and you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space and he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life. Dominion is territorial. Until you find your jurisdiction of dominion, you cannot begin to walk in it. You will hate people, you will be angry, you will quarrel people, you will hate others that God is blessing in their area of dominion. It is the word of God that allocates. While the word of God is being taught, mystery after mystery, principle after principle, the spirit of God is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance. And so this lady hears that God is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call. And this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. This roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are walking in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Won't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that 
they can they can share the um, what they call it get the debt benefit and share the money listen to what i'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when god gives you a spiritual inheritance no man no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that god will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths i have found there is rest when you find this all this fear up and down how will my future be will i be great will i eat will my children eat those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of god's training there are many questions we ask now there are questions because we are jumping classes if you stay with god there are some questions you will not need to ask believe me the kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are when you are a proper student the responsibility of the spirit of god no there there you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with him and you're saying lord guide me curriculum after curriculum no rushing no comparison i stay with you five years others have moved forward they have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth and say lord what am i god say you you are my son at least know that one for now even if you don't know what i called you to do behold what manner of love what what is greater than that one lord help me who am i i'm moving around like cain and god says don't let the devil cheat you just walk with me and in one year god will look at you and establish you with a grace and people will look at you and say ah, ah, i used to know pastor femi unfortunately you used to know him that him has died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already God bless you bless you guys thank you we must have passion for the word of god i will touch a bit on something that i thought i would have the allowance to preach this year in fact when the lord put this in my heart i said oh lord but i've cried to you again and again to allow me preach this and um I honestly thought we'll be able to have the series um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it um, it's very powerful very powerful Kai. God thank you thank you There are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom god hell and men will know you found something there are things when you find only god will know you found it there are things when you find only men will know but there are things when you find god men hell will know by, by his grace you have been given something and this is what i'm guiding you to understand do you know what i'm doing to you i'm reconstructing your understanding about god and the correct approach to life now you may not see the value in what you are receiving now but my brothers and my sisters give god time and be patient with yourself and watch the wonder that you become So tonight i will just do an introduction of it true riches just an introduction it's not part one we have a series next 
we'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year, but and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all. Settle down and listen and let God bless you. Because when we hear riches, the first thing we think about, because of the way, I don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way. You know, once people just hear riches, a lot of people are very happy. This is a very spiritual teaching. In fact, riches is really spiritual. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Luke chapter 16 and verse 11. Read with me, believers. One, two, read. Ah, that's not you. Be delivered from... Let's read one more time. One, two, read. Uh Uh-huh. Hold on. It's a question. Who will commit to you? So this one is not an achievement. People commit it to you. Listen. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Unfaithful mammon. The word unfaithful suggests instability. Is that true? Something that is not reliable. And it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? When I saw this scripture, it blessed and changed my life. Who will commit to your trust? True riches. There's something in this kingdom called true riches. And the Bible says that the basis for access to it among other things is faithfulness listen very carefully and then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the bible calls true riches is a commitment meaning that god observes and sees your faithfulness listen carefully he can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing but whilst you're doing it he's observing you and that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test and like a report card god calls you and says i give you something called true riches and he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon who will commit to you that means aside from god who else has that access He's not just trying to tell you the he's saying who else who else can commit to you this mystery that we call true riches thank you ephesians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 2 to 8 listen very carefully and you understand something powerful tonight paul is speaking now if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, verse 3. How that by revelation, listen, he made known unto me, what? The mystery. By revelation, he made known. I didn't search it out. He brought it and gave it to me. As I wrote a four in few words, we are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight. (laughs) Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace so is a grace is this grace given what is the grace that i should preach among the gentiles help me the unsearchable riches not just the gospel 
that I should preach the unsearchable, unfathomable riches. Look at the description that is used there. He didn't say that I should preach the gospel, that I should preach. They, they are mysteries. The Bible says there is a grace. That this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the Bible calls the unsearchable riches of Christ. These are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting some, some eight, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that. And he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible. This is the Pauline epistle. What is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business? Naira and Kobo? No, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life, he acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere. When Jesus was, I was not even part of the 70. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you. I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian, the dispenser. That's why he started by saying, look, when my teachings are hard, don't criticize me. There is a grace. I received it. God came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing. And he calls the name, the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. That means profitless knowledge, both for me and for the saints. That God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life. It's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the lord opened me up to this i was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and god is my witness and i tell you this i'm a i'm a student i'm not ashamed when i learn things from people and i build 
you know i'm not i'm not somebody who is is is, is arrogant to say all oh, this and that I ha i'm a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way i look at you is the same way god was opening me up to the world see this this is the key the mystery that connects to this and many times when i listen to people fathers of faith and i hear them teach i say god this is what you were telling me I say because i'm the one who told them to not everything in your life will come by studies i'm not teaching you to be lazy but we're teaching we're teaching this is this is this is a school of the spirit not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture my brothers and my sisters there are different ways god imparts knowledge to us one of it is through the stillness of your spirit be still and know that i am god and one of it is access revelation spiritual illumination god just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth these spiritual blessings these unsearchable riches what you call true riches they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of god's life here and now The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage. There has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge, where we sustain an advantage. It is not, it is not something hidden that life is harsh. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. It is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm mm -mm. from tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations etc etc everything looks like it's against you you only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage are we together now yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that i will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability i have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that God has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided. And you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage. Are we together now? Bless you. Thank you. So true riches I define as spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth. And to manifest the reality of God's life here and now we're just doing an introduction 
Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace. Everybody say the abundance of grace. The abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. It says they shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. They shall reign in life. This is what validates the fact that we are kings. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed them should be. It's a mistake there. Because these are the four and twenty elders. Redemption was not for them. So they are speaking over the saints. So the word us there is a mistake in translation. Redeem them to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred. Listen now. Every tongue, every people, every nation. Verse 10. And has made us. Now them you understand. And has made us unto our God. What? Kings. And priests. And the Bible says, and we shall reign. Where? On earth. So God's dominion agenda is real. He wants us to reign. He wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now I hope you understand, let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities, that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many. He is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe, you will mouth the Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved, as it were? To receive new life. Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted. We are refreshing ourselves now upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to christ now becomes one spirit is a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt all of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together the condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt are you seeing that now yes Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one. Right? So, a separate entity called a man. Another separate entity called a woman. By covenant, they become one. One, not physically, but one in the spirit. Recognized by God himself. Are we together now? That's why the Bible says, let no man do asunder. It put asunder. It's a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened still by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the operation of the word, the logos, and the operation of the Spirit of God begin in your life. You begin to learn the ways of God and then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience and then your mind is educated again. The light 
is driving out that darkness and gradually gradually by all those exercises conformity and transformation not impartation yet conformity and transformation these things will remain for a very long time in your life and then you begin to see the grace speaking are we together now because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge so it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil there are things that are correct so god will not reset your mind and then he will do that only with your permission so it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years that's how slow you wanted god to take you are we together now so you find out that after 10 years the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with god is not showing in your life god is limited by your yieldedness limited by your alignment this is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. and then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace people who by his predetermined counsel he has called into certain offices and dimensions usually god will do an unusual work in them are we together now a work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness that's why they can't take credit for it it was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide so they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is the only thing they have to do is correct their errors not pray for new visions they have been seeing it since it's just that they have been interpreting nonsense so what they are repenting of is not it's not it's not a hazy vision there are people who even they got born again and there and then they started seeing visions there and then others came from priesthood a wrong key forced the door to, you, you understand what i mean a wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access uh, believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll, we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when i look at in my life sometimes i just get down on my knees and i say god thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful i found them and they are very powerful can i give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God the goodness of God what is this you will know now that it is that grace that is released on you if this grace is not present you cannot have conscience it is the goodness of God that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of god allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance 
But the goodness of God also allows for continual repentance. The word repent is not for sinners. I've told you this. It's not a word that is just left for sinners. It's a kingdom expression. A system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of God's glory. It's called repentance. Let's look at a very serious scripture. Romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4. Just write it down and let's read. We're Bible students. Romans 2 one to four ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judges does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of god is according to truth against them which commit such things three and thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now look at verse 4. Read with me, please. Or despised thou the what? Riches. Hold on, stop. Let's not rush. Despised thou the... Remember, we're talking of true riches. We're fishing them out now. That there is something called the riches of his goodness. What does it do? And forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leaded thee to repentance. If you ever repent, it is the goodness of God that came to you. It's not something you did by your strength to say, oh, I think, I... no, the, the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that God has been good to you. This is the Bible. It says it is one of the two riches given to the saints, the riches of God's goodness. Hmm. Are we still together tonight? Did you know that the riches of God or the goodness of God is one of the true riches of the kingdom. Many people just, ah, oh God. When the Bible says, surely goodness, we quote it every time, surely goodness and mercy. I think we are singing a special number. This is a very deep mystery. If the goodness of God does not go with you, I will tell you, I will show you people from the Bible, the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches. You will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of God's goodness. Read with me. One, two, read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh -huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know what this means? That means you have lost the ability to recognize. This is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman, bring out a child, and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand once the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of Christ. So God looks at men and sends his goodness to them. And all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level. And they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it. Keep that scripture again please. Romans 2 and verse 4. The riches of his goodness. Not just his goodness. The riches. The wealth. You see that a man who had this was David. David knew the goodness of God. That's why he became a man after God's heart. Lucifer didn't have this. If Luc no, no demon has this. Lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of God. 
so repentance is in it it's not that he doesn't want to do it has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds why didn't he say god i've watched this thing for a long time let's talk you are my creator no it is the goodness of god that allows men to ever see the need for repentance evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades don't just pray for signs oh god let them know i was called <clears throat> pray intelligently lord let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa Ia Deboe preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had charles g finney are we together now they had this in in very abundant measures they understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of god when we say the goodness of god we just mean his ability to be benevolent it's more than that the primary assignment of the goodness of god is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness second peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight he says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another so the goodness of god is an advantage in my life an advantage an advantage what is the advantage causing me to consistently realign so that i get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun and people say ah, ah what happened and you say god has been good to me now the carnal man would think what you are saying is god gave me favor you understand what i'm saying or god made a helper or like our dear sister shared god made somebody to give me miracle a lot that's true but what really happened was that he caused you to repent to align so that his glory can better find expression in your life the riches of his goodness the next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house the key is not counseling the key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of god i i got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting god to help them to start a life and they the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it to help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me 
that was how they had to look for uh, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of god they are the people we call heartless conscienceless like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of nigerians this is what they need are we together now number two Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, working that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, see it now again, get understanding. Now see the benefits. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is causing men to discern 
acknowledge and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 dot not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standed in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She cried at the gates, the place of exchange, where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors for unto you O men i call wisdom is speaking and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple simple there does not mean humble simple means unwise meaning there is there is no fortitude for comprehension it says understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart here for i will speak excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things seven for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips eight all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge receive my instruction and not silver hold on if i give you wisdom and i give you silver wisdom says please don't be foolish to choose silver leave silver fast and come to me and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies two things the bible says are better than rubies one wisdom to a virtuous woman and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. Please read by the spirit. This is what I want you to do. Now wisdom is giving you a manifesto. Like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out. And he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him. And he's saying by me, kings reign. If you see any king reigning on earth, this is what enthroned him. Wisdom. You see any king reigning in business, in ministry. It's not just God. Wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice 16 by me princes rule and nobles even all the judges of the earth 
I love them that love me. And those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit. Substance there is not money. Substance there is results. Tangibility. I will fill their treasures. Go ahead. The Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Next verse. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, three more verses or two, then I was by him as one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delight were with the sons of men last verse now therefore unto me O ye children hearken to me O ye children for blessed are they that keep my ways wisdom one of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even god used me for his results that means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom what is wisdom the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom not the knowledge of it not the comprehension of it the ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom what is wisdom the ability to use the word to produce supernatural results that's wisdom My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today. Supernatural wisdom that happened to men. They rose on account of that wisdom. Let's look at one scripture. 1 Kings chapter 3. Solomon. God's portrait of wisdom. You see that every once and again, these men obtain one or more of these attributes. And that's what they used to do business in the earth realm. And they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We're reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself, what? 
long life neither as thou ask here it is again unfaithful mammon riches for thyself nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment 12 behold i have done according to thy words let's see what god gave him i have given 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 i have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee i have also given thee that which thou hast not asked both riches and honor so that there shall not be any among the kings you see that every time kings were there wisdom understanding go to chapter 4 from verse 29 go to chapter 4 and verse 29 chapter 4 first kings and verse 29 read with me please one two read and god gave go ahead solomon wisdom uh -huh, and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sun that is on the seashore the manifesto the attributes of all this spiritual blessing next verse and solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of egypt uh-huh for he was wiser than all men than ethan the ezrahite than heman than Kalkol, than dada all these guys are champions of wisdom they were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom and his fame was in all nations round about 32 for he spake three thousand proverbs and his songs were a thousand and five worship team you see how songs come an encounter with the spirit of wisdom believe me one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we're still singing it there were songs that were written last month we're tired of it it tells you the dimension it's not that there, there's something wrong with the song the dimension from which the song came if it is that which is of the earth is earthy that which is of heaven is heavenly 33 and he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that god gives you even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it are we together now but where shall wisdom be found remember i asked us a question he said get wisdom and i said where so job now the man of wisdom 
wisest, richest, Job is having a conversation. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Have you seen that they always go together? Next verse. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. Ah, where is the land of the living? That means it's not found here. It's not a commodity that is affordable in any market. Let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth. Mm -mm. It cannot be found. The earth does not have the capacity to produce this. It can produce Sophia, human wisdom, that is a derivative of trial and error and science, but not the wisdom that comes from above. The depth said, it is not in me. The sea said, it is not with me. That means all these things, go back, all these things are storage devices on earth. They hide things. The depth, there are things that the depth keeps. And those who know it can say, bring it out. That's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say, O oh, earth. He said, let the people praise thee. This earth is not barren. Let the people praise thee. This earth will start yielding. Meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth. No wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth. The earth hides fruitfulness. Water hides abundance. You read your Bible, everything, the birds of the air and everything came out of water. And so they said, the depth said it is not with me. The sea said it is not with me. Next verse. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Uh-huh. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, nor with the precious onyx, nor the sapphire. Next verse. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20 whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics Good understanding. God understanded the way thereof. That's the secret. Only God understands the way. And he knoweth the place thereof. Hmm. No, just, just stop at 23. God understanded the way. That means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom, who gave him? That's why I told you it is, it is a grace. This is not something you walk. Education cannot give it. No. When men possess this dimension of wisdom, God gave it to men. It's one of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Solomon possessed it. And he did wonders. Ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery. And you can see a very young, frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you. That the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord. Believe me, Satan has deceived us to chase after things. God never designed that we chase after things. These are the commanders 
of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of god so many people will tell you this is an interruption there are many men of god that will not focus listen many young nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of god just go all these pastors you are just lucky you are anointed you are anointed that's all let me hustle my life no sir no sir except the lord builds a house they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city the bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep when god gives you wisdom your eyes will see things and it will surprise you what god will make out of your life no man's anger and change what the wisdom of God does in your life let me tell you this learn this early in life whether people believe in you or not it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life if you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of Christ your anger is just beginning you will be angry till you die it will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit say yet the spirit saith the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times are we together now some shall depart from the faith he says giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons in the the spirit speaketh expressly that means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high iso so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right there would be no need for direction the hearing ear is a desperate prayer that everyone must cry unto god and say lord as i'm starting ministry give me the ear that hears let me tell you this listen i have studied the church in nigeria for many years i have studied the church in africa I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so I am amazed 
at the way people move this way when the holy ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight not sin not disobedience but that the spirit of god is going because the anointing goes where the spirit is going wherever the voice of god is that's where his power is so if god's voice and power is going left and you are going right even if it's sincerely so that's the end of it my brothers and my sisters let me tell you your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear you will appreciate this in years to come the higher you rise in ministry the more desperate you must cry moses said don't send us from here moses was not a fool with a rod in his hand thy rod and thy staff he said no way if you will know i need to know you are there just because god said move left yesterday does not mean he will say move left today you must hear him part time and there is a grace i have studied this subject of hearing god properly i can tell you hearing god even prophets have problem with hearing god let me tell you something about hearing god the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy i can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of god most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower listen and i will hear what he will say unto me read your bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives although their gifts and their graces were still there when i learned this i learned this mystery from dr dk olukoya i was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if God helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces, you must be careful. Because most times, we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself. That just because that gift, that prophetic operation is at work, it necessarily means you yourself are accurate. It's not true. Have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation 
with fear and trembling. One of the unsearchable riches of Christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the Spirit. You stand and watch and say, I've heard him. God is saying, go left. And everybody is saying, go right. Use common sense. You know you heard God. When you move left, after five years, people look at you. I have seen a bit of what hearing God can do. This ministry today, my brothers and my sisters, is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches, you won't go down. I'm not one person who comes all the time and says, God said, God said. I'm very careful. Now we have, especially we young people, we have abused God said. Anybody just comes and says, God said. Just because you felt like God said. No. Or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking. There are tongues of men. There are tongues of angels. There is the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. You must learn it. There are times when I hear God speak, everyone around me knows God has said, the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. If it is God that you hear, the voice of God will always come with the spirit of faith. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. It's impossible to hear God and remain and sit down there. No. Here and there you can think you had God and he said go to Kano. You can say I know I had Kano but tomorrow you just turn. But you know God is very faithful. He will allow you. He knows we are students in the school of the spirit. Just keep playing around. But the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you. Let me tell you God is not always speaking. God speaks but he's not always speaking. A lot of people keep saying God is always speaking. No sir. Are you always talking? At least you were created in his image. No. In the fifth day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. I've had occasions where God has spoken to me. And you have seen it. Even some of the messages. There are messages here that God gave me the titles. And I was, I've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because God said it. I stand here many times and I tell you this is what God is saying. And then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing. Let's be careful with this God said. Let's not reduce God to become a man. Now it doesn't mean that you can hear things. There is the knowing of the spirit. There is the witness of the spirit. They all look like voices. You have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings. They are very different. Just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean God spoke. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, the voice is not the only way to speak. Light is a way of communicating. Love is a language. It can speak. So I can hear. That's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are, stay for verification. When God spoke about Koinonia to start three days, we had set up the departments. God has granted us grace. I remember, if you remember that time, I was telling you God told me this and that and that. People will come from nations and people. This is what God said. I remember saying it that time. As at the time I said it, I said I saw CGC. This is not what I saw. I saw it broken, expanded. What is this that I'm seeing? I saw people standing, parking, filling the roads. And you know, like, as usual, every time you said God said, you need grace yourself to believe it. Because there are times that you just sit down and say, okay, now I'm calm. It's like you, you smoked, uh, 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 what they call this thing. And so you went high and to you, you can even say, look at the nonsense that I said. And you listen to your own message and say, hey, it's not exactly God. And God said, what are you saying? I'm the one speaking. We were preparing to start packaging our messages. I was thanking God and trusting 
and blessing him for the anointing he had given me and just saying, oh God, thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us. And here comes the voice of God. No. In this season, you are not going to sell your messages. Facebook, that time, it was, I mean, it was even the first head of media's Facebook page. And he said, just carry your messages and put them on MP3, put them on Facebook. Don't put the videos, just the audios. And I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth. That's it. My brothers and my sisters, when God says, sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things god has said listen to me there are things god has said when god talks notice that god doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it so i stand upon my watch i'm not in a hurry to move god what are you saying in this season that's the reason why we have workers retreats that's why we have our own retreats a few weeks now i'm going to start my end of year retreat i'm telling you you don't know how excited i am at that time because many of you have gone no disturbances i just shut my phone and sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear god because there is as it were many voices many sounds and none of them is without significance the voice of house rent and interrupt what God is saying. This spiritual haziness has a science. The encumbrances of life can push you. Your child's school fees. Your life. And God is saying fast for three days. I say is it God? Is it a demon? Is it? Yes. There are times that you check against the word of God. But let me tell you. There are times only God will help you. Because even you. You don't know whether this is God again. Most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm. That's why they don't understand. Years ago, I've shared with you the story. I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria. And I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money. I mean, why sit here till we die? Remember the four lepers. At least I should do one. I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home. And I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith. And I did. And I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna. And a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me, enter. Public transport, oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith. It's until the act has been done. When you turn back on hindsight, you say it has to be God who led me like this. When you are passing through it, you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting. It's when you look back and say, eh. I entered that car. I was just in rest. Rest. You are supposed to be afraid. You know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that. Until we passed Jaji, I knew there was no hope. You know, if it's 10 naira, you don't have, or 20 naira, you can beg. But I mean, when well, well, you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare. And then they now said, everybody bring your money. And people were bringing them. But my, God is my witness, my heart was at peace this is what happens when it's god that is speaking you leave him to be responsible for the word i just obeyed and that was how someone brought out paid my transport fare i dropped at fly over here entered the bus happy because i felt at least whatever it is this one i'll pay and someone knew me in the car and paid i stopped in front of north gate with the same money i was with there it was a message God was saying, look, I am God by myself. I can do it anyhow. There are times I can send a helper to give you money. There are times I say the helper is in the car. Enter and meet him there. It doesn't matter where the helper is. Believe God enough to go. There are times he parts the waters. There are times he says, walk on it. Let it just be that he see him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
you will need this for ministry when god sent us to go for our crusade we got up and moved like madmen what you see today my brothers and my sisters is a product of the voice of god you need the grace to hear god not grace for prophecy lord let me hear you you, you, you look you can pray and say god such my frail person what is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me help me in that area there are some of you that your hearing you have not trained your hearing if you if god speaks through your ears you will not hear and so you are going to say lord give me a kind of dream that i will wake up and find myself standing i will know that this one was not a dream let me tell you if your heart is right god will give you there are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind mind how many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams you know this one is not my mind this is the voice of god unsearchable riches the hearing ear the seeing eye one time the storm was boisterous I think it was Peter or Paul and it was very obvious they were going to capsize and all of a sudden the hearing ear and the seeing eye an angel appears to him and speaks to him and says don't worry there shall be no loss and he calmed the people down and said hey relax an angel has appeared to me and he has said to me that there shall be no loss and the bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived an island called melita when you hear god you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no i'm sitting on the voice of god roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle <laughs> the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and he said god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and he said people we are ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us who are going to pray. Many of us were victims of the lack of hearing. Many of our parents were called into ministry. They ran away not hearing. And the blessing that would have come to us, if they obeyed God, it would have been easy. You would have been born again since four years. 
but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god planned four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arranging thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked and said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything, but my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray, and when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary Janet, shut down, my friend. You are not hearing God. Just shut down. Lord, what is the devil trying to do? You are going to Abuja today. Next tomorrow, you are praying and it's like you saw the map of Kano. And then it's like you now saw London. <clears throat> shut down. Lord, what are you saying? Please hear what I'm, I'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience. Most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of God consciously somewhere along the journey this is true for marriage 
this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately there are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it, you will find out. There's nothing wrong if you thought it was God. You are a student in the school of the spirit. Oh, I thought this business was God. But now I'm hearing this is not God. Oh. I thought that it was God that said I should start the ministry. I remember years ago when my well friends and all of that, you know, not really close friends will meet me and say, Apostle, with the kind of grace you have, start a TV ministry. Start this. I told you about PFN. When we had our first crusade, PFN was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say, start, start a church. We need you. Be careful. Not every good thing is God. Things don't have to be bad for you to leave them. Sometimes they can be good. They are just not God. There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of god works he said he will speak peace peace is a voice peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water peace can tell you man of god this association you are joining is what will destroy you it doesn't mean they are fake it doesn't mean they are not of god but this association is what will bring down your grace man of god be careful That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream. And in your dream you saw a maker dying. But in the physical it will never happen. Because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident. And start praying and say, hey, so this is how apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you to remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Uh, make him ma, make him ma, make him Make him ma. If you have been unfaithful not faithful with unrighteous mammon who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom these are the mysteries we do ministry with these are the mysteries by which kings rise and you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits and you are saying my god how is this thing working my brothers and my sisters these are the systems paul said me who i am the least of all the apostles was this grace given that i become a communicator of the unsearchable riches i have learned these things and they have helped me they have delivered me from evil that prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us 
one hearing from God can deliver you and deliver your children's children. Our parents went head on. Some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of God in Nigeria today. And had they continued hearing God well, they would have given us a good footing. But the inability to hear. I have seen pastors, men of God that I knew years ago. Men of fire. And seen them and their shadows of themselves. How can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow? Because of one of these spiritual blessings no wisdom some of us have lost destiny helpers that can change our lives because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship are you ready to pray tonight these are the keys by which we read my brothers and my sisters look at me forget about cars truly believe me forget about houses forget about all this fake life up and down when you possess these things you will tame life it will be at your command you will watch yourself with shock and wonder there are about eight of these true riches we'll preach it in a series next i just felt in my spirit to introduce it tonight the spiritual blessings that constitute an advantage in a believer i like you in the next our time is gone but in the next five minutes find a corner find somewhere and cry to god i'll just allow you instrumentally just set the atmosphere for us everyone pray everyone pray just one of all of this that i listed the grace to hear you listen i like you to cry with all your heart lord grant me the grace i'm tired of thinking it is you when it is not you your voice be mighty upon the waters speak to me oh god concerning ministry speak to me oh god concerning family
is gone, but please listen. We have just one more service for the year. Lord, activate the speakings of angels. The angel came and told Daniel, he said, I am come to give you understanding. There are angels that are sent. I like you by faith to activate their ministry. The angels, the ministry spirits, bringing accuracy, bringing direction. cleanses your ears and helps you listen listen the voice of god will take away wastage from your life wastage there are many men of god whose ministries finances have gone down because they didn't hear god they organized conferences god was not in it yes souls were saved yes lives were transformed there are many people who should not even have churches but they thought they had this is not to scare you but i'm being sincere with you happy is the man whose ears can hear the voice of god because you see we live in an arrogant society where people and their pride will mislead you away from god this our world is very proud you see people who don't know where they are going but they make you feel stupid for staying where god said you should stay and if you are not careful they will rob you of the courage to stand until you fall with them if i followed what people said if i followed what people wanted to do in my life if i followed what people wanted me to do i would have crashed in life and crashed in ministry some of us after koinonia listen i this we have one more service maximize it are we together some of us after this service you, you should go and find somewhere even if it's for one hour in the night to say lord this issue of hearing you you have to tidy this in my life everything you claim god told you by now we know he's not the one that said it don't feel ashamed but you must go back and say what is this you are marvelous yeah. hey. you are marvelous yeah. you are 
economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy for working with me I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority. I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to work with me. Then I give you an unction. They may criticize you, but you don't deny proofs. Brothers and sisters, no, sir. I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous. The key, listen. The key is not running around. The key is staying. Martha, you are worried and offended about many things. But one thing is needful. Oh God, I should have had five children now. Don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation? Oh God, I've been crying about that job. When we talk about intimacy with God, many busy people think it's a waste of time. No, no, no. Look, I teach us some. No. No. If I followed that route, I would have been a failure today. A big failure. I'm not ashamed. You are the power in me. You are the fire at work in me. You are my ever present help. Holy Spirit I... How do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth just like that? How do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life? There are people here now with situations that doctors have written you off. Even a charm cannot solve it. You need a commodity that is not available in the earth. I told you the anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. In a few minutes from now, 10 years problems will just leave. Just like that. No, 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 no. That's what happens when you value him. That's what happens. That's what happens. Listen, when you honor a man of God, you don't just honor a body. You honor the sacrifice. The sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility. Listen to me, all men are not equal. No, sir. It's, it's a very harsh statement, but it's the truth. We are equal in Christ. But our sacrifices and the election of grace has separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host. Ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man. The Holy Spirit. We are going to begin to pray. But I, 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 I just four things. The Holy Spirit. You don't know him, you are in trouble. You will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve. You didn't study everything. You had a degree in an area. Having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom. No, sir. That information is too small to define the quality of your life. Ministry. You need him. You want to succeed in life, you don't just need information. You need a person. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. 
grace and glory. I trust that God will initiate people into that dimension of grace, of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. The Holy Spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy. Seven people. Seven people. Seven people. Shalabran is calabi. Shabraskele Brahas. Call your people, oh God. It's an initiation into a dimension of intimacy. The sister outside. For he will be real to you. Real to you by his spirit. This is not an issue of jamboree. It's not an issue of feeling anointed. It's walking with a person. It will make your life a wonder. A wonder. A wonder. He will make your life a wonder. He will not just give you anointing. He will walk with you walk with you. So you become an effulgence of that grace. Then you can say that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving me your son and living your spirit in your work in my life is done I thank you oh my father for giving be your son and leave your spirit your word on earth please sit down if you can the third thing that you must know Is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. We'll soon arise to pray. Sensitive. Ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady. Jumping out of a lady. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Forever faithful towards me will always provide for me. Praise you allow the Holy Spirit flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction I see a map in the spirit Southern Kaduna 
Let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle, it's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Shabrakatos kelabrande katai. Leketekos sotopadia. Lift them, oh God. I hear my spirit lifting, lifting, lifting. He's raising you, raising you by his spirit, raising you. There is an unction that makes this possible, raising you by his spirit. I hope I'll be able to finish this. The mysteries of the kingdom. That's the third thing that you must seek to know. Not just the word of God. Not just Rema. The mysteries. There is a lady in overflow. Three. One is here. Two is the one by the road. Three is the one by the empty land. There is a lady overflow. Three. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her. Please, I want, I want her to come. Overflow. Three. I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building right down there please sit down let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk there are so many people you must access the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say mysteries a mystery is a secret code of operation the kingdom of God operates based on systems and you see these mysteries contained in them the revelations of God the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power the first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles the second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship two dimensions of God's power so you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension the moment a principle is consistent with the character of God it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing like sowing and reaping like being responsible like mentorship all of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character you must access the principles of the kingdom therein lies the key to your dominion it is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do you must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration? You know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. But what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility? Because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No! No! Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand the power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need the same way if i stand with you and i have say tuberculosis you're a doctor doctor if i have tuberculosis and you stand near me must i believe in you to receive it no listen to me carefully are we together now i'm standing close to you it vetoes whether i agree with you i can even be insulting you but that's none of the business of the tuberculosis once there is proximity it will enter you you will live angry but you must receive it 
So if I can transfer sickness, why can I not transfer health? Are you seeing that now? That means I can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you. Life. Being the light of men. You see that? That's the concept of whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever, whatsoever is born of God can overcome. Not by jacking yourself. An understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit. Where you can walk in it. So you can come with a challenge, you can come with a sickness. Like some of you are here now trusting God. All kinds of impossible situations. They've told you it cannot be solved. They are right based on their understanding. This is a doctor. They are not wrong based on their understanding. But God's, God's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities. You see, he says with God, with God, watch this. I've taught you alone. It is impossible, but with God, with God alone, I cannot call but with my phone with in partnership with God all things all things all things are possible I want you to look at the situation you came here with for the last time tonight because in the name of the Lord God of heaven it will go hmm. my assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe not the power that governs Nigeria. Not the power that governs UN. The power that created the heavens and the earth. For he upholds all things by the word of his power. Number three. That's it there. Mysteries. So number one, you must know God. Number two, that's redemption and everything that concerns God in the person of Jesus. Number two, you must understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The third thing, you must have access to the word. You must crave for accurate understanding. Number four, this is a mystery I believe that has been known by very few. And I truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that God has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body. The fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of of the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ the body of Christ is not just people the body of Christ many people say the body of Christ is not just a church there are people the body of Christ is not people the body of Christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of God is called Ecclesia the body of Christ the body of Christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said, I will build it. I will build it. He didn't say, I will make it. I will build it. Like a formula, like a plan. And I will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. There is a formation that the body of Christ is built. It is so formidable. The gate of hell can only touch members, not the body. The body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of God 1st Corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of God. He said for this cause many are weak, limited. For this cause many are sickly. And for this cause many sleep. When was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body? That's what killed him. Please pay attention. Get my teachings discerning the body. That whole series. You have to listen. If you are in ministry here or you are a church leader, a deacon, you have to listen to it. If not, you will never rise. A body has thou prepared for me. It was prepared to be used. A formidable strategy that beats hell hands down. It's called the body of Christ. Everything is available in the body. 
listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of God it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes son of man can these bones live and Ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula Christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after Christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only God they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message I'm just doing a quick recap because I'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully I told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with God that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner God wants to be known and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with God your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when God wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of God without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is Abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now Elijah represents God's system of purifying and preparing men for revival Elijah is not a man Elijah is a system I've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in Noah Elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the Lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people Elijah must come that's why Elijah is still alive God's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of God is called Elijah is a system the man Elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the Antichrist is a system not just a person you see that Peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the Holy Spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with Benny Hinn. you see that Benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body Kenneth Copeland today represents God's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers 
destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that god anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the lord if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now i can't criticize papa Ia Deboy and bishop oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible carry posters everywhere it will not happen there is a system this is not publicity it's a spiritual reality so in honor of what they represent i am authorized to access that reality that's why you are here tonight let me tell you something listen carefully you see this thing you call koinonia koinonia is not a ministry koinonia is a system you have to believe this it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship it's not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of god i, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to mount zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of god trying to shine his ministry no tonight you're standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in god please listen to me you're standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you're about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, him Adonai.
I believe your power is here. Let your power give me a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Let it end every captivity by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it break every burden in my life. Hallelujah. Keep standing, everyone. I want to make an altar call quickly. Right now, everyone stand. There are people here, overflow one, two, three, following us online in this place right now. The Bible says this life is in his son. You don't hear about the son and receive life. You meet the son. There are people standing here, men and women scattered around. You are a pastor, leader, deacon, gentleman, lady, old, young, rich, poor, regardless of your status. Jesus said, ye must be born again. There are people here who have not met Jesus. We have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. You are here inside and outside. You have heard what I said. And whilst I was speaking, the Spirit of God, the one we so honor, was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God and then you've been here and for some reason you've been one leg in and one leg out loved God was on fire but different things happened somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of God can I join them most welcome I want to count one to five and um, now this is how we do it I want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain right now one quickly quickly run to Jesus from the depth of your heart you can keep standing you don't have to lie down or kneel down God bless you you don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. Man of God, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you three are you coming apostle I'm trying to come out but my neighbor is stopping me we rebuke that spirit trying to stop you come out come to Jesus Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you. I think we have enough people inside now. Every other person that comes, just direct them to their various overflows outside. Those coming from outside, you can wait there now. In every moment, I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Madam, look at me. You, you love Jesus Christ? Come. I'm seeing you. You are not walking well. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Who brought her? Because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain. Come. What's wrong with you? From where are you? Program. So she now told me that I should come and attend the program. So For I have diabetes and also I my back pain from the back here down to my leg. Everything. Yes. I'm feeling the pain very well. 
that is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here. So that is why I came here. Mommy, look at me. Every one of them, you heard what I said? Everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? Yes, ma'am. Of course, if it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. And all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, Thy sins be forgiven. And people say, Ah, what is this? And Jesus said, Which is easier? Hi. That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy. It's not just recitation. Are we together? Mama, I'll pray for you. Go back and join them. Those of you standing here, the overflow, lift your right hand and sincerely, you are not reciting a point. From the depth of your heart, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. No, some of you are crying, but don't worry. Jesus sees your tears. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you and I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me and tonight I receive your life I receive your grace I receive your spirit I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus victory is given to me over sin over the flesh and over the world in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today the Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to do something for me very quickly please cooperate with all the people um, whether outside any of the overflows there is a gentleman waving his hand some um, of the uh, ushers there I want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you so do that very very quickly very quickly madam I will pray for you you go and write your name and come back While we are waiting for them, please make sure we are going to be very fast. You see that our time is gone. So it's going to be a very quick walk. Very quick walk. We are going straight to the business of the night. And I want you to believe it doesn't take time. It only takes God. It doesn't take time. It only takes God. Very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. We are going to trust the Lord to... Please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of jesus please be serious in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that every spirit every force every influence standing against god's word over my life i declare that you are under judgment tonight lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and pray everyone shala bras kada baladia Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one. 
until there is total victory don't let the challenge don't let the challenge limit you take your eyes away from it and pray Are you praying inside and outside? Thank you, Jesus. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Sing it one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent such a strong anointing in this place tonight lift your hands and just be silent please i'm seeing two numbers five and one and the lord is saying there are 51 people here 51 people he's bringing massive deliverance to their families I want you to bring them out 51 people don't shout don't do nothing just keep your hands the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows right now I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve right now I release the ministry of angels Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Break it to Shubrataka Labraska Labriata. Shabraskata Brakatele Katia Labash. So break it Ali Braska Bariata. Embreko to Shoto Pareketa. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigala para koto soto balada. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty in God. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Seketela kata. Keep your hands lifted. Malekete prekete la kaya. Ay 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 ay. Mighty hunger. You reign. You ancient Zion's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. Help that lady, please. You are mighty hunger. Break forth. Down fountains of the deep. And we had us keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes, that's what I'm seeing, just flying up. Snakes, I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence right now. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. 
Mateketa, Lekete Prakata. I put the word of God upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus, I release upon it the power to perform. Shakatakata, those influences. In the name of Jesus, I release judgment, 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 judgment upon every strange influence limiting the life of God's people. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep at all. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Jesus. I'm seeing gates. Gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. I open those gates. Kato Shobarata. Legete Kete. Sobes Kotai. Embre Kete Kete Leka. Gates of stagnation be opened by the unction of the Spirit. Gates be opened. Efata be opened. The gates must open. Tonight is a miracle service. I prophesied the two lift gates be open. The two lift gates. Many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, I see gates, gates of destinies, gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft, gates over families. No progress, no results. I come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. A gate is what gives a man access access into a place access out of a place the bible says to open the doors of prison there are men who are moving but they are under prison there's nothing hear me you may be here listening to me there's nothing you do that works no matter how you try seek advice it will not work no matter what you do you are not bad you are not lazy but there is a spirit but right now lift your hands in the name of jesus one more time i come against the spirits that stand as gatekeepers over the victory of people over the life of people at the count of three i want you to shout that name the name that is a key that opens the gate one two three open it I open it I open it online outside I command it to open I command it to open locked by ancestry locked by divination locked by necromancy and projection manipulation of the constellations I command in the name of he that holds the key of David I command that door be open that no power can shut be sensitive tonight the spirit of God is moving one of the ushers one of the ushers you are an usher but the unction of the spirit help her visiting your family Visiting your family. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married, no children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Hello, Himatona. Thy kingdom come. I will be blessed. Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady, but there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map. Benway. Benway. Benway people get ready. Benway. 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 I see Benway. And the Lord says, stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway. I stretch my hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit. Visiting people. Benway. 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 By the Spirit of God. By the spirit of God. Hear me. And I'm hearing in my spirit. Break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means. But this is something that has to do with a covenant. Involving women. I arrest it right now. In the name of Jesus. I see fire dropping right now. People from Benway. You are from Benway. You come under this influence. Please help that. Person. Benway. Benway. The spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God traveling to Benway, breaking covenant. I speak to the soil of that land. Release the destinies tied with you. Listen, what I'm seeing is not good. The Lord is taking me to a vision, and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees. This is Otuko, black ropes tied around trees and the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees in the name of Jesus Christ lift your hands at the count of three may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded I command it right now upon every shrine every activity of darkness in the name of Jesus let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Hallelujah. The supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements. Listen. Without one or more of these elements, the supernatural cannot find expression. Guy, I'm seeing a wild, this is a serpent. I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again. I'm seeing a serpent. I stretch my hands. The Bible says, for the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen carefully. Five elements of the supernatural. Number one is light. The supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light. Number two, the air, sound. The supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound. Number three, the earth. The earth is a universal point of contact. Every living thing makes contact with it. Number three, are we together? Number four, water. The mystery that bears witness water is not an entity water is history water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit contained within it are more mysteries than we understand number five fire a mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything purifies and destroys can make and kill the only personality with the quality of fire is God can make a life and destroy it would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing. Purify gold and destroy the impurities. 
I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural. Because everyone is standing on the ground. I want to pray for you. The Lord is asking me to break delay. Please just follow me. We are coming to the sick people. But just follow me tonight. Let's walk circumspectly. I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down. They cannot move. You are here. No matter what you do, there is no progress. This is the story of your family. Look at me. The Lord wants to visit you first, even before your family. Your two sisters, they are married. No child. Are you married? You are not married. We have to pray. I don't know if you will believe what I'm telling you, but God is raising you to be a savior in your family. Believe this thing, no. You may not look like it, but it is the spirit of Deborah. But first and foremost, you must be delivered first. God is not finished with her. I command that devil, go. There is no hiding in his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God whom I serve, I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now. Over your sisters, over your life and over your family, I command them to be broken right now. I release upon you grace for restoration. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men. I release that grace upon you. I want you to go and tell your sisters the Lord brings a visitation to them. Even as he did to Hannah at Shiloh, the Lord comes for them with strange visitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now all those under the anointing, I command the spirits. Any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims. Therefore, in the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you know my voice. I represent his majesty. At the count of three, you must let them go now and forever. One, two, three, be gone. Go! Out of their lives, destinies, now and forever. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. For when a thief is caught, he's made to pay back tenfold. I command recovery in the name of Jesus. Let them go. There is no hiding, for his light shines upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If there is any project you are involved in, lift your hand. Any project, business project, building project, please just lift your hands. Before I pray, we pray the prayer that will release speed. Projects. Ah. I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place and I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore I stretch my hands Lord your will be done I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of Jesus I release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now everyone is standing I want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life it's not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually financially business wise if you are in a position for a long time it's a sign that something is wrong are we together it says ye have come past this mountain long enough then it tells you the formula the door is in the north it said turn northwards turn northwards you have come past this mountain long enough I want you to stand on the ground I see physical fire rising and sweeping consuming people's feet some of you as this is happening you will hear the sounds of physical chains literally physical chains this will happen i want us to shout the name of jesus three times that's what the holy ghost is telling me 
I will lead you and you will shout it. The third time, the chains of delay and stagnation will, will break open. Many of you physically, physically you feel it happening. Thank you, Jesus. Let the word of God come upon this prophecy. Are you ready now? Number one. Are you ready? Number two. Now I want you to get ready. That grace that came upon Elijah and caused him to run, overtaking the chariots of Ahaz. Speed and advancement is coming on people right now. Are you ready? Shout Jesus. Receive it now. Receive it now. Let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement. I command you to advance. I command you to move forward. I break limitations. I break limitations. I command advancement. Outside advancement. The overflows advancement. May that anointing hit you. Advancement. 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 Advancement in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. No power can stop you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than many. Other. Help me. Our God is here. Awesome in power your hands towards me don't lift it up stretch it towards me there is there is going to be an activation of strange gifts strange gifts strange gifts strange gifts the time for impartation will come but fire is living and it's coming upon people and the Lord said let them stretch their hands in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands back to you in the name of Jesus gifts 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 don't man gifts don't man gifts where is it I call it forth now don't man gifts don't man gifts you may not know it's there I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit I'm talking of potentials gifts gifts I stir it up right now like a well, I command it. Like the axe head, I command it to float right now. I command it to float right now. Gifts that will bring you honor. Gifts. So toko toko tope reke teke te. Gifts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gifts. There is a lady. I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit. You are dressed in something that looks like orange, like the house are dressing from your head to who is that? Who is that? Come from this row, Jesus praise. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer, and you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate me. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now. Inside. Inside. 
it's a strange miracle coming for that person the ninth row supernatural manifestation of the power of god my sister what do you want the lord to do in your life uh -uh. you are just generalizing huh i'm looking at you and then i'm seeing your heart and i'm seeing should i say it do you believe you can are you married huh where's your husband did you come with him what do you want the lord to do for him see this man is your real prayer that's that's you want the lord to honor him and what what is he doing now i'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place that has been your desire go and tell him that a man of god has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it maimuna is it maimun or something i'm hearing a name maimuna 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 I wish we had time today but we have to pray for the sick i want us to leave this very fast because i'm going to counsel well just leave her i found the person but but you come my dear i want to pray who is this no 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 no. it's not just any grace i'll pray for you my dear lift your hands god wants to visit your family there are four people here a very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now no 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 four of you right now a strong power is hitting you right now just in this this place outside i don't know what it is about this place maybe the miracle services will start coming here now there is there's real faith in this place my dear i end it now i end it now in the name of jesus christ Keep your hands on her stomach i end it now i command that reproach taken from your life in the name of jesus don't come out for social reasons but i'm seeing a lady here you have suffered a very terrible infection this is a, a woman issue a terrible infection this thing you have treated it and done everything you know to do but it has refused to go this is witchcraft it's not just a normal infection you have spent your money but right now the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that it comes to an end, complete end, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete end. I stretch my hands, four people, right now here in this room. Lord, where are they? One is a lady, three are gentlemen. Step into that dimension. That's right, help them. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. There is a mother here. God wants to wipe her tears. Madam, who is a gala here? Hold on. You are a gala. From where? From where? Opo. Where is that? Is there a place like that in the gala land? Huh? In Kogi State. So that you don't come and tell us lies. If, if you are not from there, just wait. There is your turn to come. From... Lift your hands. I'm seeing an attack on your life and your family. And the Lord is with you free. Madam, where is your child? Did you come with your child? There's no time to waste. Please, I'll just pray for you so that we can go. In the name of you witchcraft now and on you right now jesus christ in the jesus christ lift your hand say after me in the name of jesus 
say it in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray Kai one of the things listen hold on I'm seeing now I want you to believe it I just looked up and I started hearing the cry of as if babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted I wanted to move and I just lifted my eyes and the Lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children if you are standing in for barrenness whether you are in any overflow please come in I want to minister to you by myself barrenness only barrenness please husband and wife if you are standing for barrenness except you are standing in for someone if you are standing alone you must be married praise God if you are standing alone you must be married in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit please stand you can go you can go Pastor Alpha now we are going to pray and while they are doing that let's buy time ushers move around all the overflows make sure you collect the request of everybody I notice overflow tree there are few people attending to them there so let's have people you see why we need more ushers and we need more people say after me father, father. everyone shout it father, father. We, receive we receive your visitation, your visitation. in the name of Jesus name. we receive miracles, we receive miracles. signs and wonders now please accept they ask you you don't have to tell them what is wrong don't worry the hand of god is here to bless you in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise those online i want you to connect by faith and trust the power of god to touch you we have very few minutes to do this and in the name of jesus will be done no matter what the issue is as we touch you start checking yourself you can register your testimony we'll take it on friday whether you are standing in for someone don't worry the power of god is there to touch you in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise do you know why i came here because i saw that this woman your issue is not just healing hold on i saw the, her holding pictures and a passport and then i'm looking at it and i saw a plane is it something like you were staying outside the country is that true yes sir. because i'm seeing a woman a plane bringing you is that true uh -uh. and the lord is opening my eyes i'm seeing another vision i'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man like your husband and that man drove you yes sir. he drove yes sir. from where from abroad where is abroad Qatar. from where where is he this is you Ah. oh my god this is a baby look at me why did he drive you away you see why prophecy is powerful look at this woman come madam i looked at these things and the lord told me that this woman needs help i know i'm taking time but let's attend madam don't cry it's okay where were you before no other man we are together in our blood we are together are you, were you married yes sir. you are from where benway State, sir you are from benway yes sir you see i told you what god was saying about benway you you married him and went abroad yes sir then what happened he said as you come back my paper is having issue not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community so he lady, married another woman yeah from my same community sir he's staying abroad with her Yes, sir. He drove you away with the baby. Yes, sir. No, he, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week. <laughs> Did he know you were pregnant? No, sir. Immediately I took it. He now said to come see, back. Man, listen. This, this is what we, we keep saying again and again. Please listen to me. Now, I don't mean no disrespect. But you see why ladies will tell you people to marry people who are born again not just people who have money huh? don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe one bag and just carry you around like that it must be godly look at what this man did for this woman one week and left her with this innocent child so where are you staying now I'm 
praying out in Abuja. From my it's sister. from Abuja you came? Yes, sir. What do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, And she still came and married. Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Daddy, please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now send stroke to him, sir. He's from, okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a penal state. You are suffering. Hi. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this? This, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, is what witchcraft looks like. Are you seeing this? Whether you are in Qatar or wherever, if that spirit is not destroyed, this is what it will do. Because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman, but she didn't look. If you see this woman, does she look like somebody who has gone abroad? I'm not insulting you. You can see that this woman was not even treated well. Suffered with the man. Now we went abroad and sent her back. When this baby now, if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby, when this baby becomes responsible, the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back. Then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid. You are using the baby to make to get power. You see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together help me you're the god of awesome one he stood up your power The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even. No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible said, What God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare the favor that was on Esther that made Hadassah look at her once and had to call her to be his queen. May that favor come upon you. Listen, don't go to any native doctor. You hear me? Because I'm seeing one mama coming to you in Abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody. She told you he's a man of God. He's a native doctor. Don't go anywhere. Huh? And number two, anybody that says you should bring one naira. What did I say? One naira for prayer. Just thank him and walk away. If, if this poor woman, you still collect money from her for prayer, then you must be a very wicked person, isn't it? In the name of Jesus, he will return with testimony. My brother, come. Are you walking? 
What do you want God to do in your life? I'm, I'm a pastor, so when I, I mean, God called me into ministry. So in the field, the back to the, I mean, the things so tough, the the attacks and the uh, foundation, they became so strong. So I took off. I, I couldn't stay. But up, up to now, God is still calling me back to where I serve Him. I've been serving Him to. Where, where Where were you serving? In Kogi State. No. You need mentorship, you need covering, you need impartation. You don't just get up like that and go into ministry. God saved you, they would have killed you like a chicken. There are rules to this thing. Eh? It's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down, you get up and go to Kogi State. Do you know what pursued you back? Eh? It's the mercy of God, it's not witchcraft. They would, you would have died like a chicken. Please listen, I'm not scaring you. But there are systems. Don't get up out of zeal and just say, I am anointed. Be careful. As powerless as Satan is, is your understanding that this depowers him. If you don't have that understanding, you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed. Praise the Lord. My brother, hold my hands. I'm not just seeing you doing ministry. Truly, you need help. Eh? You need help. After service, come and see this man, Pastor Alpha. Eh? After service, come and see him. He will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. A time of prophecy and activations. Some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction. Your ministries, your lives, your businesses. The prophetic word of God is very powerful. When there is grace back in it. Because it does not only reveal it creates are we together in the next about two or three minutes i want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open be open in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman you are the first i know you are doing protocol work but you are the first to receive this grace. I see a grace of two of you. Supernatural grace of the Holy Ghost. Taking you to a new dimension in the spirit. Hallelujah. Benga, come. Grace for another dimension of fire. Lift your hands. Grace. Fresh fire, fresh dimension, fresh fire, fresh dimension, fresh fire, fresh dimension. You speak and there is power of performance, power of performance, power of performance, power of performance. No word will be empty. You speak and there is grace and the power of performance. Hallelujah. Someone come and hold. Victor, come. Come and hold them. Somebody. Grace. Supernatural influence and wisdom and victory in a strange dimension. A dimension you have never seen in your life. In the name of Jesus. Supernatural grace. I open up that level. Grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Where shall they? We're rounding up. They are doing their. Please, someone, hold her. I don't want. Hold the child. Speaking, we have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that. Ladies, you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening the power of sight, the grace to see, grace to see, the grace to see. Make sure you are holding her well. The grace to see. Penny, you are taking back fresh fire, fresh fire, in the name of Jesus Christ fresh fire i'm not it's not like i'm just speaking people this is this is just by the spirit come the lord is bringing glory on us fresh fire upon your hands in the name of 
Jesus Christ. Listen, you see, hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus. May that fire, may that grace take it. Drink of that wine in the name of Jesus. Fresh unction. Fresh unction. Capacity. Open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a heavy spirit on that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Place it on her. Just place it on her. Leave, leave it there. In the name of Jesus. Judgment upon that devil. Foul spirit. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but I want you to receive. Let me start with the men of God. You are in ministry here. It's time to take something heavy and something genuine. Let me pray. Jamfa, come. Ejimi, come. I'm seeing a, a new, a truly new grace and a new wine. New grace. And a new one is supernatural dimension. Dimension. This grace will speak in unbelievable ways. Lord, bring him into that experience. In the name of Jesus. Truly bring him into that experience. I open up. I open up. I open up. Closed fountains. I open up now. Closed fountains. I open up now. Fire. Fresh grace for influence 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 business influence new grace new dimensions of wealth influence commanding miracles strange miracles collect that child from hope collect that child from hope in the name of jesus fresh fire hope i activate that dimension fresh fire in the name of jesus god is giving you eyes that see strange dreams revealing direction for people's lives in the name of jesus where's aaron aaron where's aaron in the name of jesus christ the lord says i should tell you seasons of reward are before you seasons of great and strange reward father let it be by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit lift your hands in the name of jesus christ Something is coming strong. Go. The unction for new levels in ministry at the count of three. If you are here in ministry, there is a call of God upon your life. One, two, that fire comes now. Take that fire now. Take that fire. A new level of ministry, a new level of power. A new level of grace never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren where's Yerima head of department media please come quickly quickly I'm praying where is he oh that's him there in the name of Jesus the Lord says he's bringing you honor untold honor untold honor by the spirit of the living God untold honor untold honor untold honor now I decree and declare Jordan where's Jordan Jordan bookstore I hear restoration where are you restoration fire that restoration fire in the name of Jesus everything the canker worm the palmer worm has stolen restoration in the name of Jesus now I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God comes upon you and you begin to run like Elijah I prophesy speed receive it now receive it now speed 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 by the unction of the Spirit speed by the unction of the Spirit speed 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every helper of your destiny that is supposed to show up and partner with you and endorse you to the next level in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I place an unction on your life receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now Where's Pastor Alpha's wife? Just hold her there. She's heavy. So in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying, have I not said I will bring you favor? It will manifest. God is bringing favor. After you give birth to your child, Pastor, your family will step into a strange level of favor. It will be at the commencement of this boy's birth, or this child. The moment the child is born, in the name of Jesus Christ, there will be strange miracles. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I pray for you. The kind of glory and honor you have never seen upon your life, I declare, receive it now. Receive it right now. All your tithes, your giving, God has released the blessings, but something has hijacked it in the realm of the Spirit. Jabakatos Kebranda. I command the release of your harvest. I command the release of your harvest. I command the release of your harvest. Whatever was not working in your life before you came here, I decree by the Spirit of the Living God, go back to it and watch it work in a way that will shock you. Whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately. I say it again. Whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately. Anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to make sure that the earth kills you, to make sure that you die, or any bad news from your family, I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Christ as you step into the month of May by the power that is in the name of Jesus I declare in one month alone in one month he said have you ever had this that a city is born in one day he said but as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a son I declare in one month this month of May a dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring you strange results receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for your family members in the name that is above all names if they have never testified from January till now I command testimonies from next month. I pray for those who are students. You wrote your exams, you cannot rest, you are afraid. Whatever went wrong, I change it now. Whatever went wrong, I change it now. I don't care what went wrong, I change it now. anyone here trusting God for a job by May miracle service as surely as the God of heaven lives may God shake the heavens and the earth and give you your job and you are here you are walking and they've refused to promote you whoever sits on your promotion gets out of his office in the name of Jesus Christ any human being on this earth who has fraternized with the elements of the supernatural to limit your life I pray now I command all the elements of the supernatural to fight them the same way the stars fought for Deborah I command the earth to fight them I command their success to fight them
anyone who has trivialized your grace and neglected what you represent to make sure that doors don't open for you I decree and declare in their presence the Lord will lift you any prayer life here that has died because of carelessness carnality whatever it is sin that has been responsible for destroying your prayer life your passion you were on fire for God but there's laziness carelessness lukewarmness in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson I command a sevenfold restoration for you now prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ whatever has destroyed your world life no passion you carry your Bible you don't even know what to study you make up your mind that you will study there is a grace that helps men I pray in the name of Jesus may that enabling grace come upon your life now may that enabling grace come upon your life now the final prayer I want to pray for you listen there is a name that God is called the lifter of men hear me don't let any man lie to you that he can lift you on his own a man can receive nothing except it is given to him do you know lifting is a sign that God is with you yes read your Bible lifting to leave your current position to another is not a sign of big manism. it truly is a sign that God is with you read your Bible there is nobody that God was with who he did not lift God who can pick a man from a donkey many of us it's not like you are doing bad but where you are you have been there for a long time everybody is rising and they come and see you spiritually financially please don't let anybody indoctrinate you that lifting is not of God if you are not lifted you will be frustrated at a point because the only way to bless others is as you are rising therefore I speak to your life the God who has gloriously lifted this ministry the God who by his spirit has helped us given us a voice connected us to over 44 nations of the earth supernaturally by his spirit I pray in the name of Jesus wherever on the surface of the earth your lifting is tied to I decree and declare Maraka tosh kalibre getela tol Mare doskopre teke labariatata Be lifted now in the name of Jesus Be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your business Whatever you do Be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your ministry Be lifted now in the name of Jesus They are taking for a prey And none say it restore I say restore I prophesy restore in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.